Hello, welcome to the 1882 Montgomery Tunnel, an engineering marvel by the Carson Colorado Railway. How would you feel about digging a tunnel at 7,000 feet in the dead of winter? Most watching the channel likely assume the Carson Colorado Railroad is in a desert. So why digging a tunnel and why worry about winter, right? Just because a railroad goes through the desert, does that mean there is no mountains and there is no winter weather? Honestly, who right now thinks building a railroad through the desert is easy? Who thinks the desert is flat and warm and without rain and snowstorms? Okay, let's set the record straight. Keep watching and we will show, with the help of Google Earth, how the railroad got into Owens Valley and what is left of it today. In the winter of 1882 and 1883, hundreds of railroad workers, mostly Chinese, built the railroad into Owens Valley in the dead of winter. Over the 7,067 feet high Montgomery Pass and dug a 247 feet long tunnel at 6,880 feet of elevation. Just think of it. Railroad construction had started in 1880 from Mount House, about 10 miles east of Carson City, Nevada. The building was relatively easy going in the southeasterly direction. By late fall of 1882, the Carson and Colorado Railroad had progressed past Minna and Belleville to Candelaria, all booming western Nevada mining towns. Mount House is at an elevation of about 5,000 feet. Minna is lower at 4,560 feet and Belleville is up there at 5,190 feet. The Candelaria Junction, a little south of Belleville toward Owens Valley, is already at 5,414 feet of elevation. Now let's look at Google Earth and how the railroad progressed. Coming from the north, going to Basalt, they had to climb about a thousand feet. Not quite a thousand. That was over a stretch of 15 miles. So they had a comfortable, a little bit more than 1% grade to overcome. So nothing out of the ordinary for a railroad. Now, the approach from the northern side to Summit looks relatively smooth. It is about eight miles long and they had to climb 800 feet, which translates to about a 2% grade. And that is relatively doable for a railroad. But as you can see, you have several switchbacks here going up to the summit, going south over the pass it's actually a much shorter run down to the tunnel it's only about two and a half miles a little less the drop or climb depending on how you want to see it is 260 feet that is a little bit over a two percent grade so still not bad However, then after the tunnel, when they had to do a hairpin turn in order to get to the north side where then the railroad was heading south, it was a little bit more than one mile and a drop of 225 feet. Now that is almost a 4% grade. And another thing that the railroad builders really had to consider was the ravines on the um, north side as it climbed it wasn't as bad but as you can see here the ravines were actually quite substantial and let me zoom in a little bit so now you get a little bit better of a sense of what for ravines they had to cross 
and if I zoom in a little bit more so here you can see this is literally where they had to build up the road to cross the ravine and um, today you, you can still see the culvert going under so this is where the tunnel is between those two blue markers and you can see it came out of the tunnel and had to instantly turn and turn over a ravine quite challenging and then here is another you can see how they had to build up and up here too it's quite a road building feat in the middle of winter while the tracks aren't there anymore the road is still standing And if you wondered how the residents of Owens Valley thought about the incoming railroad, check this out. On Saturday, November 11th, 1882, the Inu Independent reported the following about the Carson, Colorado Railroad. After an uninterrupted resident of half a dozen of years in the interior, where telegraphic communication and railroad transportation are among the things unknown. A right over the incoming narrow gauge railroad is an enjoyable sensation to the average sagebrusher. Its perfect system, solid construction and beautiful appointments will compare most favorable with the recollections of the best of the old broad gauges. At present, the Belleville and Independent stages leave Benton past the summit of the line on the White Mountains about midnight and reach the junction early in the morning. The rider means here he is leaving out of Benton going north toward Montgomery summit and reaches the junction meaning Candelaria junction early in the morning. At the junction the conductor train number two was instructed by a dispatch from supervisor Lars to place the rider on the train where he pleases to go. He went to the engine. It's not our purpose to expatiate upon his enjoyment on the ride down the grade, an average of 125 feet to the mile, at a speed of about 35 miles per hour. That was a sensational speed. Last Sunday night, the heavy work on the summit was pretty much completed with breaking through the long tunnel. Grading it is completed to a point this side of the state line. Now he means towards the south, so toward Owens Valley, and must be several miles this side of McBride's now. Chief Engineer Oliver informed us that his surveyors had the great stake set in Blind Springs Valley opposite to the Moran place. The company has 50 miles of rails and ties at the front and the road will be completed to a point near Benton by the middle of December where freight and passenger depot will be erected. Supervisor Laws says that with their present force from 600 to 700 men, a point opposite Bishop Creek will be reached in January and they will get to the lake by July. He denied any intention of the, on the part of the company of stopping at that point, unless delayed by lack of material. We ascertained further that the line of the Carson, Colorado will undoubtedly 
be one on the east side of the Owens River and Lake. Let me close with a fun fact and a statement made in an otherwise flowery written article published in the Pacific Rural Press in March of 1883. Fun fact. With the railroad, it has become possible for the inhabitants of the mines to enjoy many luxuries, such as fresh fruits and the like, which before they were deprived of. Express and mail time between San Francisco and Candelaria is now 29 hours, formerly 85. Now to the statement. The objective point of this road is, as its name indicates, the Colorado River, to which it will, in good time, be extended. Already work up in it is in progress beyond Candelaria, its present terminus. The route having been surveyed and located for a long distance south of this point. The heavy work on the summit has been completed, except that on the tunnel, the only one there will be on the road and this is almost finished. To sum it up, the tunnel took a little longer than planned, but by April 1st, 1883, the cars in Colorado had reached Bishop Creek, today's Lost Railroad Museum, and home to number nine, number 18's older sister. And by August 1st of 1883, Kila was reached, the southern terminus, and the terminus for good.